Hello, many of you have asked me in the past for my sourdough croissant recipe. And finally, here it is to celebrate 10,000 subscribers. So, here we go. To start, make a levan or a stiff starter. In a bowl, combine 40 grams or a quarter of a cup of water and 40 grams or a quarter of a cup of sourdough starter. Mix well with a silicone spatula to dissolve the starter. Then, add 80 grams or 3 quarter cups of bread flour. Use your hands to mix all the ingredients and then knead the dough for a couple of minutes on your working table. I am starting this levan before I go to bed to start my recipe early the next morning. Once your dough is ready, place it in a glass jar and place a rubber band around it to mark the level of the starter. Cover the jar loosely with a lid and let it ferment overnight on the counter. The next morning, your starter should look like this one. You can tell that it has almost tripled in size and it is ready for you to start your recipe. So put 100 grams or 2 thirds of a cup of water at room temperature into a bowl and add 100 grams or two thirds of a cup of milk, also at room temperature. Add 80 grams or three eighths of a cup of sugar and eight grams or half a tablespoon of salt. Add all the stiff starter or levan that you prepared the night before. Use a dough whisk to start breaking up the stiff starter and add 150 grams or one cup of bread flour. Mix all the bread flour well and add 50 grams or three and a half tablespoons of butter at room temperature, cut in small pieces. Mix well with a dough whisk until the butter is well incorporated into the dough. Many of you have asked me if it's possible to make my recipes by hand, so today I decided to do this recipe by hand and give my stand mixer a break, but you can use your stand mixer for sure. Finally, add 250 grams or one and three quarter cups of all purpose flour. Use your hands to keep mixing the dough in your bowl. When the dough has come together, Take it out of the bowl and knead it on your working table. Roll it gently with both hands to help the gluten develop. Knead until the dough is elastic and shiny. Stretch it carefully and if the dough passes the window pane test, like this one, your dough is ready. So. Form a bowl again and place it in a grease bowl so the dough doesn't stick to your bowl. Cover the dough with a plastic wrap and let the dough proof in a warm place for about 4 hours or until it doubles in size. I am placing my dough in my dough proofer at 86 degrees Fahrenheit or 30 degrees Celsius to speed up the process but you can place it inside of the oven with the light on if you don't have a dough proofer. While your dough is proofing, prepare the butter block for your pastry dough. Measure a square of six by six inches or 15 by 15 centimeters on a piece of parchment paper. Place 240 grams or a cup of European style butter inside the square. This type of butter contains a higher butter fat percentage than regular butter, about 82 to 86 percent, and less water, resulting in a richer taste 
softer texture, and faster meltability. It is important to use this kind of butter to get the traditional texture and flavor of the French croissant. Fold the parchment paper to cover the square and use a rolling pin to roll and distribute the butter evenly in the whole area of the square. Make sure that your butter block measures the right size. Use a ruler during the whole process to ensure the right sizes of the dough and butter. Once your butter block is ready, place it in the fridge to cool. After at least four hours, your dough should be ready and it should have double in size. So take it out of the bowl, stretch it to form a rectangle and press it firmly with both hands to degas it. Cover the dough with plastic wrap and place it in the fridge for at least one hour. After one hour, your dough should be very cold. If it's not very cold yet, you can place it in the freezer to cool for about 15 minutes. Sprinkle plenty of flour on your working table and your dough. Roll your dough to a rectangle of about six and a half by 13 inches or 16 by 32 centimeters. Then place your block of cold butter on top in the middle of your dough. Pinch the dough together with your fingers at the extremes of the dough. Sprinkle some flour on top and place the dough in a plastic wrap. Bring the dough to the fridge to cool for about 30 minutes or 15 minutes in the freezer. Use a rolling pin to start rolling your cold dough until you get a long rectangle of about 6 by 20 inches or 15 by 50 centimeters. If you see any resistance or tearing, stop and let the dough rest in the fridge. If you see butter melting out or exploding out of the top or bottom of the dough, your butter was too warm, so cool it down in the fridge and then continue the process. Once your dough has tripled in length, trim the edges with a pizza cutter so that you have a uniform rectangle. Fold one corner of the dough in, just slightly. Fold the rest of the dough in towards that slight fold. And then close the whole thing like a book. Sprinkle some flour on your dough, cover it with plastic wrap, and let it rest in the fridge for about 30 minutes. After 30 minutes, roll the dough again until the dough triples in size. Trim the edges, then fold the dough in thirds. Cover with plastic wrap and take it to the fridge to rest for another 30 minutes. After 30 minutes, Roll your dough until you have a 20 by 10 inch or 50 by 25 centimeter rectangle. First, roll the dough to get the width right. Once the width is right, work on the length. Make sure to use enough flour on your working table to prevent the dough from sticking. As I was rolling my dough, I realized that the dough was fighting back, so I needed to place it in the fridge again to let it cool and continue the process. Remember, it is key to maintain this dough cold at all times. So after 15 minutes in the freezer, my dough is cold enough again, so I can keep rolling it until I reach the desired length. Use a roller to cut a 20 by 10 inch or 50 by 25 centimeter rectangle. Mark your dough on the base of your rectangle with a pizza cutter every 4 inches or 10 centimeters. Then mark your dough on the top 
This time I start marking 2 inches and then make marks every 4 inches or 10 centimeters, as shown in the diagram. Now carefully cut triangles of dough. Make sure to cut even triangles. This will ensure having a better looking croissant in the end. To roll the croissants, carefully stretch the dough. Attach the tip of the dough to your working table and roll up the dough tightly. Place the croissants in a prepared baking sheet. Make sure to leave enough room in between the croissants because they will grow as they prove. Cover them with a plastic lid or a plastic bag and let them prove for at least 12 hours or even more at room temperature of around 70 degrees Fahrenheit or 20 degrees Celsius. Sourdough croissants need a long fermentation time at medium temperature. If you proof them at a higher temperature, the butter can melt and ruin all the layers in your dough. In the end, the layers should look like these beautiful layers, and your croissants should double in size. Once you are ready to bake them, brush them with egg wash. and place them in a preheated oven at 375 degrees Fahrenheit or 190 degrees Celsius for about 25 minutes or until they are golden brown. When your croissants are ready, let them cool off for about 10 minutes and then slice them. You should be able to hear this sound as you slice them, which means the outside layers are crunchy and the interior should look like this, very airy, fluffy and soft. These croissants are delicious, enjoy them. I really hope you can try this recipe. If you love croissants as much as we do, I know you're gonna love to make these croissants for your family. Please, if you like this video, click on the like button. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. I have a new recipe every week. Thank you for watching.